Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle, and before we get into the video today, let's talk about the sponsor. Today's sponsor is Tiger Balm, and I've been using Tiger Balm since I was a pole vaulter back in college. It's a topical ointment, pain relief, and it's going to alleviate some of those small pains that you endure after working really hard. Now, I don't think being a builder is that much different than being an athlete, because every day you put your body through a lot of work, a lot of stress, all for a final goal, some sort of an achievement. For me, it's usually building some epic post frame, and Tiger Balm is there to alleviate some of those small pains that you might encounter. Now, if you don't know what Tiger Balm is, it's a combination of herbal blends and medicinal plants known for their curative effect. So my favorite part about Tiger Balm is the smell of it. And I know that's a little bit weird, but it brings me back to my, my good old days, and it reminds me of like the feeling of pain relief. So even just smelling it, it almost starts relieving pain before I've even applied it. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra pain relief, Tiger Balm is definitely a good solution. And I, I personally enjoy it. Okay, flush out your outside edge and hit your nail down there. So of course it's windy out here in Northern Illinois spring. It's 40 degrees this morning. It's gonna be 70 by two o'clock. So that's gonna mean wind. But we're working on this soffit here so that we can get our fascia on, which means then we can run our roof trims and get our standing seam metal roof on this porch roof. That's the big goal because without it, we can't run any of the siding up on the wall and we can never finish the job if we don't get any of it done. Make sure you give yourself your gap. Oh, we got a nice little sag in there. Okay, you can hit your other, uh, yeah, hit the end, yeah. nail that off. And then reach out and get into that sag, can you? Nice. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. One maca, two maca, three maca, rita. I, I don't know. No, no, I think you were right. I think it was like one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then hip. What was it? Was it hit, hit, this, head, head? Uh, hey, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Now, this fascia, we're not using trim nails. It is really windy. It's because we're hanging gutter from this. Uh, this fascia as well, since it's gonna be covered up by gutter, we're going ahead and we're using a galvanized framing nail with the 21 degree, nice full round head. We leave it, you know, proud a little bit, so I've got it backed off, and then we can hand pound them clean and then get our touch up paint. Might wanna put your glasses on. Dude, I just watched, wait, I think I see it. Yep, yep. Yeah, you, you, you can scoop it. It's not, it's not like outside of your lid, right? And then, yeah, just pull down with it. Yeah. That's a big old chunker, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they make these glasses for. There, how's that? I wish Pazload had a full round head 21 degree cordless nailer. I tell you what though, man, fascia, soffit, you probably can't hear me in this wind, but uh, it sure does look good. Pushing my way. Come on, come on. Right there. Like. Does 
so windy. Okay, so now this, that's gonna fold over. Let's go ahead and try to line it up again. Let me make sure my cut is where I want it. All right, let me make the cut. Do you got what it takes? Nope. The problem is what I really wanna do I don't think I can. What am I talking about? Yes, I can. Oh, no. All right, let's see. I think I'm a little bit heavy. Yeah. Which is good. I'd rather always be on the heavy side. I can't even hold my snips. I didn't know if you were like, had a fuck in the Parkinson's or if you were just fighting the wind. <laughs> Okay, so this is really, really close, Greg. And I think with a simple rivet, it would be really money. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. I think it's worthy of showing to the people. So we've got the double overlap here, and here we've got this mitered here so it's locked in. What I did right here is I folded over and folded back. So on this left side, the trim wraps around the corner. On this side, I left it long and then fold it back. That way there was a nice clean edge, not a cut edge of metal right there. Now this is all gonna be under gutter. You're never gonna see it. This will get a panel. So if you're looking up under here, sorry, it's really hard to do this in the wind. If you're looking right here, this is gonna be a panel of metal. So that's gonna get capped here with the hem. So this is absolutely, this is like absolutely impossible to film. But I think you guys get the idea. Stupid wind. We're ready for steel over here. And we're just working our way back over this way. But while it's raining outside, figured I'd step inside here where the drywallers have been working on the first coat of mud. So it got taped and now they're working on first coat. So you'll see that they're starting to fan, fan out their butt joints. I don't know if we talked about this or not yet, but, uh, or earlier, but the exterior walls are all 5 8 drywall and that is because we're two foot on center spaces on our girts and honestly i mean you know if i were to come over here in the corner and push on this wall greg what do you think you tell me with an unbiased opinion don't lie to me don't lie to the youtube That's solid, solid. Oh, yeah. right i mean people always ask about the fact that we have girts you know running horizontally and we don't have a vertical stud every 16 inches how that was gonna be strong enough for the wall. Well, that's why we use 5.8. I don't think we have to. We could use like a high strength half inch. Uh, my drywaller feels really good about that, but we decided, you know what? Let's just use 5.8. That's what we know has worked in the past. And uh, so all the exterior walls that are post frame, those are all 5.8. The ceilings are all 5.8. And then all the interior walls are all half inch. Obviously in the bathrooms, we've got green board, and as you can see, that's blue board. This was kind of an ad later for, um, this is gonna get a cabinet face and that's gonna match the, the vanity here in this bathroom. This is the spare bathroom. And yeah, it's just really looking good as all these cracks and corners get covered up with mud as the drywallers move through here. It really starts to clean up the place. And then even if we go out here to the 
um, go out here in the garage. This is the workout room. This whole area was originally gonna be one little room in the back corner and it got turned into, we went ahead and just shut off this whole uh, back area of the garage. And the reason we did that, because if we kept the garage under 1,000 square foot, then we didn't have to do an oil water separator and we could do a floor drain. And if you don't know what that is, basically, uh, not a floor drain, I'm assuming you know what a floor drain is, but an oil water separator, it's like a three part system, it's expensive. And I don't know, for something like this where you're not changing oil, you're not working on transmissions, you're literally pulling your car in, maybe the car is covered in uh, snow and it's gonna melt off. That's about the only reason you have a floor drain. Maybe you're gonna wash it occasionally, but by making this garage down to a thousand square foot, by putting this wall across here, it allowed us to get rid of that oil water separator. So we've got a, uh, like a man cave room back there and then the workout room right here. So it actually worked out pretty good. And one of these days we will actually get that front door, which would be amazing. So this is nice, nice big bonus room. It's coming together really good. Bathroom. Pretty dark in here without any lights yet. That's one thing that would be really nice to have in here is some temporary lighting in each room for the drywaller, but he's just bringing you know, lights everywhere he goes. So you can notice here, you've got the screw lines there where it's uh, two, four, six, eight feet. And um, so instead of having the vertical studs, you've just got horizontal girts, but with that five eighths drywall, it's plenty, plenty strong enough. And then obviously here in your interior walls, you've got a vertical stud and that's why those screws are going vertical. It's gonna be nice when there's lights in here. Hey, give me a little blow on that. Nice. It's just what I needed. All right guys, so what we're doing here oh. is putting up our first piece making sure that we're three eighths of an inch off of our bottom. That we're nice and plumb. Let me just double check plumb. And our peak piece is centered right on the peak of our underside of our roof gable. Go ahead. So you'll notice the door, we already have it trimmed out. So all the casing trim is on, which means we cut around the, the casing. A lot of our windows will actually run our siding right through around them. Then we will install the casing. And this is because we needed this on in order to do our stone. So typically with a vertical siding, this is not how we would do it because it in introduces another caulk joint that we have to deal with. If we run our siding underneath the trim, we don't have to do that, so it's kind of a nice benefit. But it does mean that you need to detail the trims correctly, so you'll see that as we move forward. Thank you. What I like to do is usually just eyeball a couple, especially when you get in these nice long, you know, just a bunch of repetitive pieces. You can kind of eyeball, make sure that your reveal is good. When you do this enough, you start to kind of know what that is, what that looks like. And then every, every so often, I'll just go ahead and uh, set my reveal with my eyeball. And then I'll just grab the, you know, just grab the level here 
make sure the piece is running nice and plumb. And if it's off just a hair from these other ones, you're never gonna see it because the gap is not, is not gonna change much. I'm getting sweaty a little bit, man. It's like the wind has died or... I feel like it warmed back up or something. Okay, so you'll notice this window here, we just kind of loosely went around it. We didn't have to be as precise because now we can install our pre-assembled casing right around it. And that's because we didn't have to go into our stone, so we didn't need to install our trims prior to the siding. These doors and the other window over there, we had to install the casing so that we could know exactly where to install our stone so we could flash the stone, then install our siding. So definitely like this a lot better. It, it makes it a lot easier. And you know, with properly flashed and properly detailed water screen and just in general, like a properly detailed uh, exterior, you don't have to worry about the moisture that might get behind the siding because it's going to all work its way out anyway. So we got the Swenson snap table here and this is perfect for standing scene because you know it kind of just does all these things automatically for you without having to do a whole lot of work. We make a couple marks and uh, we don't have to do what I'm doing right now, which is notching or cutting out the notch. It will do it automatically if we want it to, but we like to leave this notch long. And I'll show you here as we install this on the roof, but uh, I think it gives it a much cleaner end result. So we just leave it. I always love it when the people are like, oh, dude, I could do that by hand so much quicker. It's like, you could okay, probably you do one of them. Let's say you bust your butt. And get one done quicker. You get one done the same amount of time. Yeah. How, like, how, how much, how, can you keep that up for the entire day? Yeah, for all 60. All 60 pieces. And are they all gonna be consistent and the exact same quality? Like, yes, the Snap Table Pro is not cheap. I paid, I don't know, I don't remember what I give for it, Greg, a lot. <clears throat> like, yeah, I actually paid for this thing because I saw the value in it once I use it, especially when you start doing hips and valleys. Yeah, I can do hips and valleys. Hey, what's up, YouTube? So today, Greg is gonna show you guys how to do hips and valleys with the Snap Table Pro. I'm gonna go home for the day because it's so easy. Greg Haas can do it. Hit that thumbs up, stick around, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on this epic in-person training. What's up YouTube for today? So here we got the notch that we cut out. And then over here, I'm cutting all the material out we don't want and leaving what we're going to use up on the roof that we can't do this um, on the machine. So the machine 
has some limitations, but having to cut out one side is a lot easier than doing all of it. All right, so here's our panels that are gonna go on the back porch. And you'll notice we've got the hemmed edge that's open so that we can still get over our trim and everything is good and then we'll close this. And then this is what's important here. This little leg that we've left, that is something the Swenson shear doesn't do, but it's gonna close up. You can kind of see what it's gonna do. It's gonna keep this edge closed. Otherwise you would look right up into all of these laps and it would be kind of ugly. So uh, that will show you up on the roof how that gets done if you don't remember, but just know that's important for a good looking standing seam metal roof.